too much of anything can be bad. The world is currently in a state that is pretty hard to explain and cope with. Our lives have been turned upside down with the aftermath of many individuals' actions in today's society. I personally have been deeply saddened by some things that I have witnessed take place. From the addiction to social media, to the sexualization of children. It feels like that is no stone unturned in the world. With that being said, I just have the biggest question of how and why is this happening? Today we will dip our hands into the rabbit hole of life we are currently living. If you like this video, be sure to show it some love. I'm no journalist or reporter. To say up front, I am just a regular person that cares about the world and wants to see better from people. Where did it start to get bad? Okay. So I know you probably heard it all before. The news is what is affecting the world. Social media is ruining our minds. Technology has made us weak. Well, I'm here to say, shit, there was no lie told. In a world where you can have a drone drop off your new latest gadget, where cars are becoming more like spaceships, and you order food with a swipe of a finger, I must admit, damn, we might just be a little lazier than we would think. There are a lot of things that were always said by our elders that still carry into the world today. Two of these famous quotes I remember hearing quite frequently would be, technology would be the fall of man, and that if you want to hide something from somebody, put it in a book. We may just look at these quotes as Granny Bluebell or Uncle Hammer just running their mouths, but how about we look into the truth from these statements? Okay, so I was born in the 90s, 1992 to be exact. I have had the pleasure of living and seeing life before and after all of Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, flat screens. Man, look, it was a time to be alive, I tell you that. See, growing up in that time, there was a big focus on outside activities, gaming, you wouldn't believe it, school. I didn't even know what a wireless controller was unless it was to a TV, and hell, sometimes even that failed us not working or somehow always finding a way to grow legs and teleport from where you put it in the first place. To put it plain, I grew up in what I call the bone area. Technology at that time was literally bare bone, like we had DSL. If you were here in this era, you understand the struggle. Back when everyone had house phones, we couldn't even use them if the internet was connected. If you did, you were immediately hit with a DSL sound. Sound fun? How about cell phones? Does anyone remember T9 settings? You had to actually use the letters on the phone pad. Not only that, we had one of the best satisfactions with these phones. If you had a flip, a call would dip fast. Man, the days were great. And we cannot forget about bikes. I swear the whole hood had one. If you had a mongoose, you were that. Well, I can't quite say that word, but you know what I mean. And I just looked up the price of these bikes now. God damn. $300 for what? Does it turn into a rocket? Anyways, these bikes were the symbol of unity, a call for a store run, the mark of whose house everyone was at. What I am basically trying to say is that we enjoyed time outside, ran around, took journeys, embraced real friendship. But as time passed, we were introduced to new, shinier things that drew attention from a wide range of people. I specifically remember the first touchscreen phone being released by Metro. Here we thought our sidekicks were the ish. However, these prototypes of touchscreens did not work well. Here we were introduced to the 3G Fatback iPhone. Lord, this phone was plump, but it was a game changer. This phone now introduced us to better working apps. Now over the next few years, many companies would follow behind iPhone, creating their own devices known as Androids. No, not them, man, the phones, ah. Anyways, all of these phones would implement the new feature known as applications. These apps were a start to a new world. 
with access to many things with the click of an app like dictionaries, Bibles, calculators, and more. These simple apps help to lead us down a path of technology-based strategies and memory. The increase in the ease of technology also brought the laziness within society. The more technology, the more phone numbers we forgot, the more bill due dates we wouldn't remember unless added to the calendar, more access to things we usually would not see on a daily basis. This is where I want to bring in the app known as Vine. Vine was created in June 2012 by Dom Hoffman, Rus Yusupov, and Colin Kroll. The app was originally called Vine Labs and was intended to be a social media platform for people to create and share short, looping videos. This app was a game changer for everyone, easily becoming one of the most downloaded apps on the app stores. The era of Vine brought out many social influencers we see to this day, including King Bach and more. Being many comedy-based skits, Vine brought many laughs that were desperately needed and helped everyone to connect more. Now before I continue, I want to say there were other sites and things that were out at the time that could be considered social media. However, these sites were not able to be installed into phones. Sites like MySpace, Tagged, and Facebook would definitely be a huge influence on Vine. I myself indulged in MySpace and Tagged a lot growing up. MySpace created a vibe that cannot be forgotten. But back to Vine, the game-changing app that took the world by storm, Vine would continue to grow, possibly being the first start of the social influencer movement. Many other people would eventually see the popularity in short-fed content. It was quick to the punch and could deliver a lot within a few seconds. Meanwhile, while enjoying the satisfaction of watching an eight-second clip that could make you laugh uncontrollably, we did not recognize the damage and beast of what would become to be known as the social media takeover. See, Vine had now opened the door. Many were scrambling around, trying to now create the next big thing that could compete. See, the funny thing is, at this time, Vine was taking off, but there was another group with a platform already watching the progress. They would look at their own app and come up with the blueprint to what we see as a norm today on social media. The Big Dog IG. This app would be known as Instagram. 2010 Instagram was created. The app was originally launched for iOS and quickly gained popularity, with 25,000 users on its first day, 1 million in two months, and 10 million in one year. The Android version was released in April 2012, further expanding the reach of the application. This app only allowed simple photo uploads. Instagram took notes and began to make changes to their own application introducing full-scale photo uploads, the ability to upload up to 15 seconds of video, messaging, and more. Snapchat would follow in 2011, copying the formula in a similar way, but with its own unique change that made it stand out, with features like vanishing messages appealing to younger audiences. Starting off, most of these applications were heavily censored, not allowing things that were considered too sexual or graphic for the app. However, over time, these restrictions would eventually start to become more lax. More and more things on social media would slowly start to transfer from more comedy to more serious and exposing content. A little darker reality. The apps that started off being a way to express yourself and communicate with others started to become more of a freak show for dopamine hits. You see, starting off, we all saw social media as a blessing, a way to connect with the world, a way to be yourself and show others who you are. That was before the gate was opened from somewhere in headquarters. Social media heads seemingly started to allow more and more questionable content to slip through the cracks. More and more people were posting more outrageous things that would push the limits of the restrictions of social media. From posting photos of guns and wearing revealing clothes to fake news, twerk videos, and brain rots doing the unthinkable for attention. Social media had now started to become a virtual world of unexplainable and unspeakable acts. Now, with every single one of us sitting back as we scroll through social media, watching some random car accident, a person getting shot, twerk videos, or hell, just the latest music video, you can't help but sit back and wonder, were we meant to see all that we are now seeing on social? 
And to answer that question, simply no. Growing up in the 90s, we were not constantly swept with bad news or bad influences. Of course, we still had immature people that did ignorant things, but there was more control. You didn't know about Bobby's aunt from Maryland passing. You were busting your ass to even get a girl to send a picture. And the biggest one of all, people actually communicated. Anybody remember their last cookout? What I am basically trying to say is that social media introduced us to things we would not naturally see in a regular day. We don't see the damage of watching someone be unalived on camera. We don't pay attention to the effects of people watching others live their best life. Meanwhile, that individual watching barely has food in the fridge. The more that we started to see, the more problems started to pop up. With more and more being allowed on the platform, what started as a place of laughs now became a place of despair for many. You see more people giving up all goals and dignity to try to get a viral video, more shootings, more booty, and just more hate. I mean, imagine an individual with two kids, no food, a bad place of living, etc. They get online and see some random person throwing a random $10,000 in a whale's mouth to see if a scuba diver can retrieve it. The person watching and struggling is now watching 10,000 they could use be wasted. This could motivate them to strive to do better. This could motivate them to want to get rich and put 20,000 in a hippo and see who retrieves it. But let's be real now. Most people that see something like this will feel a little envy. This slowly creates more or the demon time moves from people we see online today, which in return leads to more crime. You got creeps that love to watch women do things sexually. Now they have all access online to watch any video a female may put up that sexualizes herself. This creates a dark fantasy between a creator and a fan like none before. These regular creeps that would probably never see a lick of booty can now see a world of ass. This puts some ladies in danger. Some of the creeps that watch not only watch, some of these individuals actually act upon these dark fantasies leading to more crime toward our queens. Now, we have going around, a little too much for mankind eyes, more and more individuals are being caught up having dealings with minors. See, there are two problems with this. One, why is a grown-ass man or woman attracted to a little kid who still thinks monsters are in their closets, with a lot of these situations lately occurring between celebrities, Second, what in the hell is going on for most of these kids to even respond? Now, do not get me wrong, most creeps use sneaky tactics to lure in their prey. However, there are some situations where these kids knowingly recognize the age of these men or women and still engage. This brings me back to the influence of social. More and more lately, I am seeing more content or more shows slowly try to dab in the sexualization of kids, whether it's kids blatantly kissing on camera, to kids twerking, or wearing revealing clothes. More and more of this kind of content is being allowed online, and more and more, this feeds the predators with dark fantasies, urging them to act on impulses. Which all in all is creepy as hell, but unfortunately it's true. With more and more of this content that we intake, the more and more it leads to the unbalance we see today. Rise of mental instability, crimes, STDs, and more. If you do not believe in the phrase art imitates life, it is very true. Social media being the art of life that we consume. To change the narrative of what we see, we have to start to limit the consumption of content we intake on a daily. The things you see have a bigger influence on you than you think, with scientists already proving that the effects of scrolling social media are equal, maybe worse, to that of hard drugs. In a grand scheme of things, social media started off as a safe haven for comedy, a place you could go to catch a few laughs and motivation. However, as time progressed, the applications began to take a darker than Vader look. I am not here just to straight up bash social because there are still many good creators and content out there. However, they can be drowned by the nonsense we may see. With many social sites censoring many who speak out against some of these issues I named and more. It becomes hard to try to take back social media and make it cleaner. Instead, we have to try to focus on limiting our time we spend on the applications. 
a little break can make a huge difference in the well-being of your everyday life. Hey, don't take my word for it. Go do your research yourself on everything I stated here. I am just a messenger that has done research and is sharing my thoughts. I really do want to see everyone as a whole do better. Coming from an era that literally seen life before and after social, I am pretty certain of the effect of social. If we do not snap out of this cycle, then it will do nothing but continue. Following the path leading to the same thing happening to the next generation. We can be and we are better. Together we can all help heal the mental instability of the world. One voice, one mind.